This is the eHealth Radio Network, your source for health advice on demand. And now your host, Eric Michaels. Thanks for joining us once again here on the Health Radio Network. This is your host, Eric Michaels. Today on the program, we're speaking with Amelia O'Reilly, the founder of How to Breast Cancer, a site and community that guides those that have received a breast cancer diagnosis and their families and friends with guidance, support, and information. And Amelia, thanks so much for joining us here today on the Health Radio. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure to join your radio program. Well, you're certainly more than welcome. When we're looking forward to hearing from you today. Your story is certainly inspirational, and thanks for your time to share it with us. Now, I understand you had a distinguished career as a human resource executive with companies including Coca-Cola and Home Depot. Now you've transformed to a champion for improving the patient experience. Tell us a little bit about why you founded How to Breast Cancer. Let's start there. Absolutely. And so I think that there is a part of the foundation of creating How to Breast Cancer at the breastcancerguide.com that comes from both my prior career as a human resources executive and also as a, as a patient living through the breast cancer journey that I'm still on. And what really happened was at the end of 2020 was when I had to step from what I now call my former career. And part of that is because at the time, the cancer was just completely out of control. And even though we had been in treatment for the 18 months preceding, it was still absolutely, um, completely raging. And so we were running out of options and we needed to get a handle on that and finally found, thank goodness, a treatment that has worked and has worked for the last two years. But it was really about eight months after that that I started to really have the ability to focus on what I had been experiencing as a patient and how I could use that experience to help others that were on their journey based on what I had wanted to have as a patient and could not find. And that's really what created for me the idea of creating this platform And in so doing, it's really to create that better way forward for what it really means to onboard as a patient and to navigate a journey in a way that is sustainable. And I really leaned on my my corporate HR training for many, many years that I've been in that field to really say, how do you create the right kind of tools and practices to help others? So much of human resources is creating an employee value proposition, right? And so you could take a lot of those same principles and apply it to creating a patient value proposition and really helping a patient understand what they can do and, and what is available to them. And that's really the focus that created the, this, this, uh, this site and this platform that we launched last fall. Well, we're certainly thankful for what you have created and been inspired to accomplish And of course, I couldn't even imagine receiving a cancer diagnosis and how scary that would be. What do you wish you knew and what tools does How to Breast Cancer offer? Is it free and what has been the feedback so far? Absolutely. I think that receiving a cancer diagnosis is one of the most terrifying things that anyone can hear. And I think a lot of times people, myself included, there were no indicators that it would be something even minutely possible for for me. And many patients feel the same. And so what happens is you jump into this and you really have no idea what to expect most of the time, and nor do you have any preparation for what is about to happen. And I think those pieces for me, what I wish I had known back in 2019 when I was first diagnosed instead of receiving the materials that I got that were mostly pamphlets and a binder. And a lot of times that's what patients receive. It's here's a handful of pamphlets or a handful of, of reading materials. But then you're kind of you know, on your own to, to the day-to-day management, and especially for those that have to be on the journey for the rest of their lives you start to lose a little bit of that continuity of information and that sustainable path. And so that's really what also motivated me to shape this platform in a way that it allows the patient to to pace themselves. Because what we provide are 
information pieces by way of articles and blogs and and tips and Q and A's and also videos that really help you as you're going through it. We have this thing called the journey map where you can actually click on wherever you happen to be in that journey. Maybe you're just getting the diagnosis or maybe you're just starting treatment. And we provide you with some, some written tools and, and practices that we have found, I personally have found helpful so that patients can understand here's what's ahead here's what the week of chemo looks like here's how you bounce back from that and so forth so so as we continue to expand these tools our intention is for patients to be able to navigate their journey at their own pace and for caregivers to also be able to do the same the materials that we have on the site are available for free and so folks could visit the site thebreastcancerguide.com and they could see all of the materials that we are that we've created and that we're continuing to add to to this to this platform the feedback so far i must say has been really positive and we've posted some of the testimonials that we've received from patients directly on the site those are unsolicited and comments that have been sent to us either directly through our email channel or through our social channels and one of the things that has been i think the most um, the most telling is when we hear from folks that are either on the other side of their journey, so they've concluded their journey, maybe they're out of treatment, they've been out of treatment for some time, and to a person, they will say, this is the, the stuff that I wish I would have had when I was starting. And I'm going to send it to someone that I know just got diagnosed because these are things that people need, and it's, and it's in a way that gives the patient a little more control um, in a situation that feels like you have none. And, and I think that's part of what we're also trying to, to give patients and caregivers is a little bit more of the ability for them to drive it as opposed to feeling that they have no say or that they have no way to really get uh, beyond the day-to-day. -day. Now, Amelia, in your opinion, why have issues related to the patient experience been lagging compared to information on treatment, prevention, and other areas? And how are you helping to change this in these regards? And what has been the response from the medical community? Do you have a positive story to share in these regards? That would be great. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. You know, I think it's interesting when we started to explore this a little bit more, and when you think about the continuum of breast cancer, there's a lot of information, as you said, around prevention and detection and then treatment and whatnot. And I think that those are all important facets and obviously life-saving. And I think that depending on the lane that someone is in, they look at it differently, right? So the folks that are focused on prevention, and early detection would say they're contributing to the patient experience by catching a potentially serious illness early. And that's absolutely true. They're preventing that patient from having to go through a harder phase later on. And when we speak with doctors and scientists that are creating new drugs and new treatments, they would say that's their contribution because people are living longer as a result of these newer medications. And that's also true. My point around the, the patient experience is that middle day-to-day -day management, because even when you have early detection and you're able to catch some things, you're still going to go through a myriad of things to really stop that disease from getting worse. And even when you receive the latest medications, I'm on a medication that is only two years in the market, very grateful for that medication, but there is still significant management of side effects that has to happen. And so the space that we occupy with that patient experience is, is the ability for patients to know how to do all that, how to juggle those pieces and really be able to, in many ways, you know, prevent what is otherwise the onslaught of side effects and the toll that it takes on the body and on the psychological side of the patient. And I think that because there has been so much focus on either end of the spectrum, either the early detection or the newest medications, what ends up sometimes falling by the wayside is the day-to-day -day livelihood of that patient. And a lot of times people will say, well, you know, people are living longer. And I believe that that's important. That's extraordinarily important. But it's not just, again, in my humble opinion, it is not just again about living longer, it's also about having the highest quality of life for as long as possible. And to do that and to be able to give the patient 
options and to give the patient the ability to really drive their care in a different way and be able to know how to really be their own advocate. Those are pieces that I still think need a lot of attention because the tipping has happened more to either newer stuff and or prevention altogether. There's about 4 million people in the U.S. living with breast cancer alone. And that's just the patient. It doesn't account for all of the people in their ecosystem that are also affected by that. And it's, a, it's estimated that almost 290,000 women and men are diagnosed each year, again, just in the U.S. So the numbers are significant, and those people living with it need to be able to have the tools and the ability to navigate their journey on their own terms, as opposed to just what happens you know, to them or what they feel they have to do no matter what. Well, we certainly have appreciated your joining us here today and really appreciate all the information shared so far and what you offer as well. Today, we're speaking with Amelia O'Reilly, founder of How to Breast Cancer, a site and community that guides those that have received a breast cancer diagnosis in their families and friends with guided, supported information here on eHealth Radio's Cancer Information and Health News Channels, a part of the eHealth Radio Network. Now, you have a gala event, I understand, coming up next month on October the 8th. Tell us about this and the goals it will achieve there. Yeah, so it's our first um, in-person and our first gala event that we're doing since we launched last fall. We really have three goals with this event. Uh, first, we decided when we first created the web, the website and this platform that anytime we did a fundraising event, we would select a charity to whom the proceeds would be given, and obviously a charity that is focused on breast cancer. And so for this gala, we have selected an organization called Living Beyond Breast Cancer. Their site is lbbc.org. They've been around for more than 30 years, and they are a phenomenal organization that not only provides direct support to patients by way of financial support and resources and coaching and whatnot, but they also have a really strong focus on funding for metastatic breast cancer. Metastatic breast cancer is when the cancer has spread beyond the breast to other parts of the body. It is an area of breast cancer in totality that is very underfunded. Less than 5% of total breast cancer research funding goes to metastatic, even though it is estimated that 30% of those diagnosed with early stage will turn metastatic. So LBBC does a phenomenal job of really driving the, the emphasis on that research. So they are our selected partner and our first goal is to raise as much money as we possibly can on their behalf. The second goal that we have for the gala is really to raise awareness and education around the patient experience and really driving the point of why it matters, what it means to have a meaningful patient experience and why we need to continue to push also into patient customization of care and what that looks like, especially for those that are on chemotherapy for many, many years. The third part of the, of the gala, the third goal, is to then recognize uh, a leading oncologist that is exhibiting, in our opinion, what patient experience excellence looks like. So we are creating an inaugural award that is called the Patient Experience Medal of Excellence, and we are awarding it to a physician in the gala. And our goal is that every single year when we do this gala, we will add to that base and we will select a couple of physicians that are nominated by their respective patients for receiving this award as well. So those are three of our top goals for this in-person gala that we're hosting on the 8th. Well, this is fantastic, and I can only expect nothing but success from that gala in October. Now, what's the biggest takeaway you want people to have when they discover how to breast cancer? I think the biggest takeaway for us when people discover how to breast cancer, our site is thebreastcancerguide.com, is that we are a credible hub where they can access tools and tips and best practices from a patient speaking with a patient about how to navigate their journey and that they can do so in a space that is safe, in a space that allows them to self-pace in a, in a platform that is 
is really driving the experiences that we have walked in. So this is not just about things that we've read in other places. This is from the fact that we've been on the journey, that we know what it's like to have repeated failed treatments and what do you do with that and when, when that happens. And, and the takeaway is for those that visit our site, whether you are a patient or caregiver, a loved one, that you are able to, to, to visit us you know, time and again and to have information that is reputable, information that is helpful for you, and that is at, in a way that you can lead it, you can drive it, you can you know, bite-size it, and, uh, and it allows you to have a better experience and a better journey than you would otherwise if you're out there on your own. That's really for us our intention is to serve in that capacity and for folks that go through this to to be able to do so with excellence and grace. Amelia, before you go in in conclusion, is there any closing thoughts, a tip or anything else you'd like to mention or share with the audience as we do wrap things up here today? I think that the one final thought or tip that I would have is one that was given to me early on by someone who had been uh, a breast cancer patient and navigated a journey for a long time, and that was to, to not overwhelm themselves. It is easy to feel overwhelmed when you are first diagnosed and you are embarking on something for which you have no training most of the time and no experience. And the ability to to take that deep breath and to be able to to approach your journey one step at a time is absolutely significant because for me, almost you know three and a half years into this, and the first eighteen months of which were absolutely horrendous, uh, I think that maintaining that what can I do for this next treatment? What can I do for these next couple of weeks so that I didn't get too far ahead and start to feel overwhelmed, I think was what has sustained me to the point where I'm at now. And that has enabled me to also be able to, you know, kind of, you know, provide that support to others that are coming up now into their journey. That's really for, for me, one of the things that I really kept going back to each time. And I would encourage others to do the same. Well, Amelia, it's tremendous what you have created here and the resource and the support that you're offering on your platform, How to Breast Cancer. And speaking of which, tell the listeners, hit that website once again where listeners can tap into How to Breast Cancer. Absolutely. And thank you again for your very kind words and for inviting me to be a part of this platform. Our website is called How to Breast Cancer at thebreastcancerguide.com. We are also on all the social media platforms and we invite folks to to join us and also to subscribe to our monthly newsletter. We also provide excellent tools and tips for anyone navigating a breast cancer journey. Thank you so much. And you're certainly more than welcome. Again, listeners, for more details and to tap into this resource, visit thebreastcancerguide.com. Amelia, thanks so much again for joining us here today on the Health Radio. Certainly was our pleasure. Thank you. My pleasure. Again, we've been speaking with Amelia O'Reilly, founder of How to Breast Cancer, a site and community that guides those that have received a breast cancer diagnosis and their families and friends with guidance, support, and information. And for all the details, once again, visit the Breast Cancer Guide. Dot com. And again, this has been your host, Eric Michaels, and we do thank you for your continued support of the Health Radio Network. Join us again soon for another episode that will help further expand your knowledge on those things that are important to your health and wellness. For more eHealth Radio reports, we invite you to visit our main radio channel site at eHealthRadioNetwork.com. And as always, we do thank you for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in to the eHealth Radio Network. For more information or to subscribe to this podcast, visit eHealthRadioNetwork.com.